following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618 the trader's edge now steve rhodes the january 6th yeah i think today is january 6th it's definitely the magical monday edition of today's trader Z show i'm your host tv perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past hope everybody out there had a great weekend Let's make sure we have a great week. Thanks so much for joining us. You know, during this next hour here, this next hour, it's all about you. So I'd love to hear from you. I want to be able to take a look at the charts that you're looking at, whatever instruments, try to uh, give you another set of eyes as to what that instrument may be doing out there. And you can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, well, we've got you covered there, too. We make it pretty easy. Let those fingers do the walking Send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tigers Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magical Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we've got uh, kind of a mixed bag out here. You've got the Dow that's out down 32 points. S&P is up two points, so it's flat. NASDAQ is up 21 points. That's a quarter of a percent to the upside, so that is not flat. Russell just turned green out here. Semis are up 22 uh, bucks. That's down 1%, so they are the big loser to the downside, so to speak. You've got the trannies off uh, nearly 1%, 98 points to the downside. Spot volatility index is trading out at 1435. I believe that's still above its 50 day exponential moving average. Gold is up 14 bucks. Silver flat right now. Light sweet crude is up 11 pennies. Natural gas is. Uh has turned then negative out there. Still no bottom inside of natural gas. And the 30-year treasury has gone negative. Now, lead the charge dollar-wise. The upside, you've got Google up 29 bucks, Amazon 20, um, ABIOMED up 11, uh, or maybe just A, Biomed. Is that maybe how you pronounce it? I still don't know to this day. No, needless to say, it's up about 7% or 11 bucks. The trade uh, desk is up 7% about 3%. To the downside, AutoZone down 3%. That's 40, 37 dollars in change. Booking holdings off 16 bucks. That's less than 1%. Market taxes holding down 2%, 850. O'Reilly Automotive, the devil, down 666. So where do we want to begin? Maybe we should just begin by taking a look at the questions that have come in. That way, if more roll in, we've got more time to look at them. And Ian wrote in early this morning, and Ian says, I want to get your take on long-term once you get your long-term and short-term view on bonds this year, um, I know you're a negative on the market. Not so fast out there. Are you positive on bonds? If not, where would be the best place to hide? I don't think there is a place to hide when the uh, blank hits the uh, fan out there. But but um, just some things will perform better than others. But with regard to your question specifically, if we take a look at, let's start with the long term. You want a long term, you said, and you wanted a short term view. Here's the long term view. I just caught a little bit of uh, Basil's show. I know he was talking about bonds as well out there. So it seems like we've got a lot of folks that are ready to maybe short the heck out of this. Now, if we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, um, what we can see here is that in 2019, this did top with a TD set of nine count pattern. TD setup nine count pattern or any kind of topping pattern, whether it's a TD setup nine count, whether it's an A to B equals CD, whether it's a Rhodes momentum indicator, whatever it is, whatever pattern it is that you trade, the next key thing is understanding where support is. So we basically use three areas to identify support. We use Stevie's green line. This is the monthly time frame chart. And uh, because any time price just pulls back to that, especially when the line is green and bounces off of that, which the long term time frame has, then the sellers have done what they were supposed to do. When you get a topping pattern, what you do is you push price down to support. If it busts through support, then Ian, we could say, okay, price is going to head down to where it broke out longer term, which would be 136 and 17, 30 seconds. But we cannot make that statement today. So longer term, you've got a top. 
but prices now bounced off of support out there. That's the monthly look. If we go take a look at the weekly look out here, so going from our longer term to our shorter term view, what do we have on the weekly time frame? Weekly time frame from its road momentum indicator bottom to the high does it with wave number seven. That's letter G on my charts out there. We've got these letters uh, just simply, well, part, they're part of the Chapman wave uh, tools, but only one small portion of that. The numbers that I use are for the TD setup counts out here. So in this case, price is trading below Stevie's green line, but you can see it's just really consolidating sideways, right? It's been consolidating sideways for a number of weeks out there, but a valid topping pattern. Uh, if we go take a look at the daily time frame, what we're going to see. So we'll use the daily time frame as our short term outlook. And we take a look at our short term outlook. What we can see is that price continued to push down to where it had broken out. Where it had broken out was that solid uh, horizontal red line, 155, 17, 30 seconds out there. Now, price is trading above the top of its daily profile. And it's very possible that uh, price will make its way up to where it had broken down. That was at 163.30. No guarantee that that's where it's going to go. We can see resistance in the 160 area out here. But right now, price is trading above the top of its box. So the short-term view is bullish. The longer-term view is still bullish because price has just simply pulled back to Stevie's green line, tested support out there. Um, what else can I share with you or tell you about bonds right now? If we go take a look at just simply the March contract, I guess it's not there. Maybe what I have to do is pull this up. Can I do that? I can do anything I want. So here's the, and what I wanted to really just do there, Ian, was just understand where are our 30-year treasuries in relationship to their 2019 high and low out here. And you can see it's trading in between them. So there's no breakout to the upside, so to speak. There's no breakdown to the downside out here. Just really more of a uh, consolidation pattern. Your question, I believe, was, you know, where would you sell this uh, puppy? And... Um, <clears throat> The answer to that question, I don't have. I don't have just yet. Where is it that you would sell this thing? Um, let me take a look at. Let me take a look at this. Now, now, when I say that the short term is bullish, I, I'm not suggesting that you enter into a long term bullish trade out there. Um, I would say. If you were going to try to take a position to short, it would be up at the top of its weekly profile, which is 159 and 10, 30 seconds out there. That would be the spot that I would be uh, looking at to go short. Otherwise, um, I would stay out of this game, so to speak. And so to answer your question, there is a uh, move to the downside, um, and we have every reason to suspect that there will be. Um, the baby will get thrown out with the bathwater out there. So not necessarily any place to hide. And if there were a place to hide, we would see it. You and I would see it. How would we see it? Well, one way that we would see it, one way that Mastering Probability subscribers will see it this year is by really taking a look at what that uh, – Global flow of capital. Where is it headed to? Now, this is taking a look at just simply a number of instruments, the global flow of capital, since uh, we came back to begin 2020. Right now, actually, the biggest performer is uh, Lightsweet Crude. Lightsweet Crude is the big performer. Gold next, Goldman Sachs, Commodity Index, but I don't know what's inside there. It could be gold and Lightsweet Crude, basically flat for the Dow and the S&P for the year. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's down about 17 points right now. S&P is up uh, three. Um, and so uh, when I was answering Ian's question, uh, first he said he, he, uh, the message was, part of the message was that I was bearish on the market. So let me, let me, uh, and then I just, I, I mentioned that comment. And so let me make sure that, that I'm clear on that. So we take a look at the uh, charts out here. In, in this case, I'm just taking a look at one of my tools. It helps me in a, in a second uh, understand what's topping, what's bottoming, uh, where are things at, just using uh, some of the uh, tools out here, and some of those tools being that roads momentum indicator top and bottom signal. So, Ian, you and, and everyone else should be concerned uh, of the number of different topping patterns that we have in place for the indices out here, uh, both inside the cash indices as well as the S&P sectors, let alone the futures contract. And if we go all the way over to the right-hand side, and you know how we use the TD setup nine-count pattern, uh, you, we know that when the... Uh, when that pattern uh, forms its tops or bottoms, uh, it is typically done on, or what we'll call a valid pattern, would be done on either the high or low on bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine out there. So we've just started a new year. We don't know what 2020 is going to bring, but when we take a look at the uh, right-hand column there, you're going to see eight and you're going to see a star. What's the star telling us? Excellent question. The star is telling us that it's a valid pattern. It's telling us that the high so far is is still in place out here. And so when you take a look at the yearly time frame, we've got a number of different uh, topping patterns and signals. Uh, we've got the monthly uh, and daily signals out here. So this is absolutely a time for caution, especially as we come into that seasonal time period where we begin to see the market uh, pull back. The question is when it does or if it does. Um, how are we going to know if it's just a retracement, if it's just a normal pullback, or it's some type of change in trend out there? And very much like we took a look at the um, weekly time frame for the uh, Treasury bonds out here, I was looking at the left-hand panel when I said, hey, Ian, if you, if you really want to sell, then let price bounce up into resistance. The resistance level we found was 159.10. That was the top of the weekly profile. Now, the same thing would really be in place the opposite, right? Um, 
Where would you buy? Where would you buy something? You would buy an instrument that's pulling back in a support. Well, let's go take a look at the uh, daily profiles out here. So, and the weekly profiles, quite frankly, that are attempting to form inside the equity futures contracts, just so you get a feel for what's going on. If we take a look at, you know, just look at the left-hand panel right now, the bottom of the daily profile is 32.16. It's trading, the ES Mini is trading out at uh, 32.37. The top of its daily profile is 3241. So if you were going to sell, and there's reasons, there's absolute reasons to sell, it would be in the 3241 to 3244 area. Why? Well, there's a brand, as I mentioned, there's a brand new weekly profile that's attempting to form. Now, the problem with using these weekly profiles is that we just recently had the rollover of the uh, contract from December till March. And so the data that's being used to generate these weeklies and, and what we have up on the screen here happens to be the uh, the uh, uh, March contracts for the equity futures contract using Stevie's advanced tools out here, the super Doppler tool to help us identify new profiles that are attempting to form. So if you do take a look at the ES Mini, you'll see there's a new box at, uh, use, using the March contract of 3244. But let's see what happens here from a weekly perspective. Let me go change this. Well, that's the NQ. Maybe I'll just do it for the NQ. Let me just do this here. Let me just change the we're on the daily time frame. I want to just change. I want to just turn those daily profiles off. So let me just do that. And I'm just showing the top and the bottom of the uh, box out here. So now I'm going to turn the top and the bottom of the weekly profile on. This is using, so you've got top and bottom. This is using my synthetic version. So the synthetic version allows me to stitch together all of the, uh, it's slightly different than the continuous contract out here. It allows me to stitch together everything in a very organized format. So I can go back historically and take a look and put whatever tools I want and profiles out there. So here we can see that you've got the, the using all of the data says, ah, Steve-O, don't be even thinking about the weekly profiles. Now, when I change over to this, you're going to see in the NQ panel number two, oh, I'll be a son of a gun. It actually disappeared. It was there. Uh, let me switch over to the ES Mini. Okay, all right, go ahead. That's that's the way the universe works. Decides it's going to go ahead and stick its tongue out at me. That's okay. Won't be the first, won't be the last. So now let me switch over to the ES Mini, and we'll see here. We'll see what will compare its profiles on the synthetic version. The weekly should pop up here after it calculates. Now here what you're going to see is the top of the new weekly profile using all the historical data is 3187, and prices above that level, whereas, when I go back here, take a look at the March contract, same tool that I'm using, by the way, out there, my super Doppler tool. This is showing that price is trading with inside the box, 3244. So what do you do from here? You've got this this data. You, you got to do the best you can and use all the data out here. Um, you know, if you're looking to sell into this market, and I can justify doing that, I can justify it, and I, we can go take a look at that. Then the 32.4, then use the top of the daily box, 32.41. And quite frankly, if price closes above 32.54, that's the 2019 high out there. Then that's telling you you're on the wrong side of the trade. Now, luckily for you and I, we don't have to just rely upon the ES Mini profiles. We can go take a look at the NQ, and the NQ is trading above the top of its daily box out there. So that is certainly in a version of a breakout mode. When I say a version, what do you mean by that? A version? You tell me there's different versions out there, Stevo? Yeah. Well, when I say a version. Uh, 884350 is notated on this chart. That is the 2019 high. The market can't be can't break out. It can't break out. It can can do whatever it wants. I say that it can't break out until at least it's traded above the 2019 highs. 884350 in the NQ, 28721 for the Dow equity futures contract YM 168780 for the Russell 2000 equity future contract and 3254 for the ES Mini out there. So, okay, Steve-O, how is that going to uh, help you? Um, it just says these, uh, and if you take a look at the uh, the Dow, it's trading in between profiles. I guess the point that I want to be able to make to you, Ian, is the following. There are many bearish patterns out here, many signals. But until we see price breakthrough support, just like the Dow, uh, not the Dow, but the we took a look at the long-term Treasury bond, we saw the monthly chart. We saw a topping pattern. Price pushes way back to support, and it holds out there. That support becomes buying opportunities until it starts to fail. 
And when it fails, we get two closes below support. That tells us we're headed lower. We've got to look for the next pattern to the downside out there. So hopefully that uh, helps you out. Let me go on to the next question that came in. And this one was coming in from uh, Jim. And Jim wanted to take a look at uh, ticker symbol MJ. MJ is the... Uh, is the uh, alternative harvest, so it's a pot ETF out there. And Jim's specific question is, can you look at MJ and let me know if you're seeing any bottoming pattern? So let's look at, here's, here's, the, here's the bad news. We'll start with the bad news. Uh, because we're we'll take a look at our three different time frames using our market profiles. The bad news is price is trading below the bottom of the daily, bottom of the weekly, bottom of the monthly. Price right now is also trading below the 2019 low. No, I take that back. But it's trading below support. Support of the bullish engulfing candle from a few days ago. We'll take a look at it at 1657. So, Jim, that's the bad news. I'm going to go see if I can find you any good news for ticker symbol MJ Alternative Harvest. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
welcome back, uh, folks. We're studying the chart of ticker symbol MJ. That's the uh, alternative harvest ETF. Before we went to break, I gave you a figure of 1657. Now, that was the weekly bullish engulfing candle. We can use the low of, in this case here, the two candles. That was on a weekly basis. There's a daily bullish engulfing candle as well. And that's at 1611. So your, your go no go is a close below 1611. It's not looking good. But but let's go find the good news out there. So I want to make sure you have those numbers. You asked, is this forming a bottom? If we take a look at the daily time frame chart, what we can see here is there is a Rose momentum indicator bottom that formed back on November 20th. And that low has not been taken out. And maybe all that's going on in the case of MJ is just a pullback to test DV's red line. That number is 1636 as we speak right now. Stock is trading at 1649. So the answer is on a daily basis, you have a valid bottoming pattern. To the extent you want to take a, a trade in it, uh, now would be the time or a test of 1636. You don't want to see this close below that 1611 or certainly what you really don't want to see now close below is a low from November 20th. That would be your key area to be looking at. So is there a bottoming pattern on the daily? There is. Is there a bottoming pattern on the weekly time frame? Let's go pull the chart out here. Take a look at it. We can see that price has been pushing lower, doing less relative energy. There's your bullish engulfing candle. And so the weekly is saying, yeah, this is really trying to form a bottom. Price is trading above Stevie's green line, which is 1595. So again, just watch out for that daily support that uh, low out there. With regard to the monthly time frame, as we take a look at it, what we're going to see is that this could be or should be uh, bar number nine on a monthly basis of a TD setup nine count out here. Uh, so it's possible that the lows will get taken out so that bar number nine, the month of January, or could be the month of February because that bottom could form on either bars nine or the bar following nine. So you've got bottoming signals out here. The monthly chart, if you're looking for the long term, is saying be a bit more patient out there. So Jim, I hope that helps you out with regard to MJ. Thanks so much for writing in, and uh, Happy New Year to you. Next question coming in from uh, Raymond. Raymond writes in, he says, I've got a position in crowds, or CR, CRWD. So let's go take a look at uh, crowd strike. That's what that is. Let's, let me pull this up here. Sorry about that. Let's get actually get that on the chart so you can take a look at it. Nice day here today with big volume behind it. 17 million shares so far trading above the top of its uh, daily profile, which was 51.66. So it looks like uh, what price is doing. Well, shoot, it's taking out the uh, the top of its bearish structured weekly profile, which was 52.73. <clears throat> let's take a look at the question. I've got a position in at 51 bucks. My upside target is around 60. Okay. And I'd like your opinion of the target. So let's go take a look at uh, targets for crowd strike. So CRWD, see if there's any kind of bottom signal. Sure. This thing bottoms back here with a TD setup nine count and a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. It does that on October 23rd and the uh, 24th out here. With regard to resistance, resistance right now on the daily base, I would understand the 60. And, and there you just simply be using your Japanese candlestick. Uh, tools. You're looking for where's that next area of resistance. It would really be the high from the trading session of November 30th, if that's what the approach that you want to take. And that high is 59.50. So it's close to 60. If price is able to close above 59.50, then your next targets to the upside are 63.61. That is where price broke down when it formed that last TD setup nine count bottom. And above that would be 69.46 out there. So crowd strike on a daily. I see your 60 area. It's slightly below that. But I also see some further upside potential if price can take out that. I don't remember what it was, 59.50, something along those lines. If I look at a weekly time frame chart out here, this bottoms with a TD setup nine count bottom. Uh, does that uh, last year. So you've got a nice bottoming signal uh, inside of uh, CrowdStrike on a weekly basis. And on a monthly time frame, you know, may not be enough data because of this as being an IPO out here, not enough data to provide us with anything. Yeah, there's really not. So uh, you've got the you've got the additional upside targets. Best of luck with that trade and a nice move on uh, your part. And that was uh, from Raymond. Uh, let's see if we have any other questions. I don't see any other questions, so let's go ahead and surf around. I don't see anything inside of the uh, den. Uh, if there is, please retype it in again for me. I would appreciate it, but let's just continue surfing around the market. So we see what. Uh, so so I'm just trying to let's let's take a look at uh, just look at some of my tools and charts here. Uh, see where we go. What is this? Um, well, that we already talked about. 
apogee and perigee. So let's take a look at where the uh, where the markets are trading in relationship to that important pivot point. 32.37.50 for the ES Mini is the number. We're trading at 32.37 right now. If we see two closes on a 30-minute basis above 32.37.50, it's telling you the price wants to continue to move higher. This could be a place. We gave you, what, 32.44, I believe, was the top of its uh, daily profile as a place to go ahead and uh, sell the market if you were looking to do that. This would be another spot, 32.37. Fairly nice wide-ish ranging bar during that last half hour coming into the 130 time frame. So I'd be cautious with regard to that's not typically how you like to see an instrument coming into a, an area that you want to sell. You'd prefer to see smaller bodied candles. A smaller body candle tells you there's less conviction than one that in essence uh, opens at the bottom of the candle, closes at the top. And when you take a look at the past uh, several hours, it's the widest ranging bar that's out there. Uh, the uh, Dow is up above its key level of resistance, 28.570. The NQ, well above the top of that resistance level at 87.76. And the Russell is down below. So what is Stevie saying? Stevie's saying, look, folks, if you see the ES Mini above 32.37, uh, that's giving you a signal that it wants to trade higher. If we take a look at what's going on uh, inside, just simply what's transpired this year already, only a few days into the trading session. But I had mentioned earlier when we're taking a look at T-bonds, uh, you know, it's important to understand, you know, where were the highs in 2019? Where were the lows in 2019? Where is price trading in relationship to that? Because if price is trading above those highs, it's telling you that you have a, uh, a, a, a some type of a breakout. That is going on. Of course, you want to be able to identify other levels of resistance out there. So here we can take a look at nine different instruments. On the very left-hand side, you've got the ES Mini, the NQ, and the Russell and the Dow. Uh, you can see that the NQ is above its 2019 high. So he or she is sitting in a nice bullish breakout level. We really referred to that when we took a look at uh, how price was traded above the top of its daily box. So now you've got a twofer. You've got two signals inside the NQ that are saying, nah, nah, not so fast. Not so fast out there. If you take a look at New York Stock Exchange, Russell and the semis, uh, you can see they're trading below their 2019 high, so no breakout going there. You look at the S&P, the Dow, and then the uh, NASDAQ composite. Well, uh, one of the three is breaking out. Uh, you can see that is the NASDAQ composite. In fact, on a closing basis, it found support at that 90.22 level. That's a 2019 high. Gold right now is trading above its 2019 high. That's 1567.60. You'll want to pay close attention to that. And then we take a look at silver, well below the 2019 high. No breakout going down there. And bonds, we had referred or we had touched on that a little bit earlier. If we take a look at market breadth out here, one way to take a look at market breadth is look at the New York Stock Exchange, the advanced decline oscillator, that is panel number two. What we know is that when that oscillator reading is below zero, which it is not right now, right now it's a 29.14. So above zero, the basic um, interpretation should be that buyers are in control. When it's below zero, sellers are in control. Now, when price goes up above or below on day one, You've got to have a follow through on day two. But right now, the uh, the daily, on a daily basis, the market breadth of the New York Stock Exchange is bullish. Steve Rhodes, and that ain't no bull. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow is off 11 points right now. Semis uh, still the uh, still the big leader to the downside off 22. The trannies are off 109 points out there. Um, let's uh, continue surfing around some of the charts. You can give us a call at 877-927-6648 if you'd like, or send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Um, let's take a look at... Let's take a look at the VIX just for the uh, heck of it. Where is it trading? So it's trading still above its 50-day exponential moving average, which is 1368. That would be a level to be watching. So, you know, when it's above its 50-day, um, nasty things can happen in the uh, stock market. Um, and, and it is right now. We've got these topping signals. So let's actually zero in on the NQ. I think that that's what we should do because that's 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 the strongest of the four indices. So we need to see what it's doing for different time frames out there. So... To begin with, for the NQ, actually, let's take a look at this. We can see that price ran into res resistance in an area where it should have. This is taking a look at a monthly time frame chart, by the way. But what you're looking at are daily, weekly, and monthly horizontal trading ranges. Those of you that are longtime listeners here at TFN, uh, Bud Rolfs is the individual that taught us about primary trading ranges. Uh, he does, he uses that tool differently than I do. I've uh, utilized a portion of that, automated it so that the system automatically picks out the horizontal trading range boundary levels out here. And in my case, uh, because uh, in you know, as Bud had taught us, we're always taking a look at the opener close, the body of a candle out here. Um, and in my case, therefore, I don't carry the dailies over and say the dailies have to be equal to the weeklies. That's why you see some different numbers out here. But what you can see is just this congestion in the 8840, uh, 89.27 area. Uh, and you're looking at the upper right-hand corner, and that's a resistance level. Okay, so your resistance. That's important to know. Um, let's go take a look. Let's start on the 30-minute and work our way up. So we're going to take a look at a 30-minute NQ. What signals did it generate for us? Well, first, at about uh, 5 o'clock this morning, it generated a TD setup nine-count bottom. 
that bottom that bottom is is very valid. As the cash market opened, we saw a little bit of a thrust to the downside, but all that that was doing was creating a nice big old uh, bull sash candle out there. More importantly, was price was able to break above close above resistance, which was its TD9 count breakdown level, which was 87.90. That's what identified the bottom. Now price is above the second breakdown level, which is 88.24. This is the 30 minute time frame. If price closes above 88.49.75, it's third 30 minute breakdown area. It's just telling you that price wants to continue to move higher. Nothing bearish when we take a look at the uh, daily time frame, not the daily, the 30 minute time frame for the NQ. How about the 60 minute time frame? Well, the 60 minute time frame did complete a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. It did it before a, a key level of breakout support, which was 8716. Uh, and this suggests at this stage here that price inside the NQ could make a run all the way up to where it broke down on a 60 minute time frame, which is 8906. But as we speak right now on a 60 minute time frame, nothing bearish about this chart. In fact, just more bullishness about that chart. If we go take a look at the two hour time frame chart, the 120 minute time frame chart for the NQ, we know that price held support at 87.16, a TD nine count breakout area. Price should find resistance at the top of its current two hour chart, which is 88.55, but it's above the center. Uh, we can see that Stevie's green line had turned red as that area was being tested. Uh, that was on the prior bar out here. So it looks like to me, this is communicating to us 88.55 is its next price target. Now, it doesn't tell us whether it's going to do that between now and the end of its session or overnight or anything along those lines. But here, if we take a look at the 240 minute time frame chart, we can see that price held support. It's TD setup breakout support, both at 87.0750 and 87.16. You can see the bullish reversal candles that occurred as price was pulling back to that support level. That makes these, it just shows you the power of understanding a TD9 count and its support or resistance areas. In this case here, price is above Stevie's green line. This is the four hour time frame chart. This suggests 88.61 is the next upside target. That's about another 30 points, uh, under 30 points to the upside. That's using the four hour time frame. We've got the five hour time frame because we have that five hour energy drink out here. In this case, we can see that price also found support 87.07. Uh, price is right now trading right up into resistance. That number is 88.37. 8837 is the number to be watching. So the five hour time frame chart says, hey, here's my consolidation zone. 88.37 at the top, 87.07 at the bottom. You see price closing above 88.37. Well, it's at least telling you price should move to 88.64, the top of the five hour time frame. Of course, every time frame is going to give us new information. So it depends upon which time frame it is that you're trading. But what's really what we're trying to do is we're just saying, hey, look, the NQ is this lead dog out here. She, he is the strong one. So let's go take a look at it and try to figure out what it's doing. So the level, I'd say the level to be watching right now is coming from that five hour consolidation where price is traded in between support and resistance of its CD nine count levels. On the daily time frame, we can see price, if, there's a, if this is just a counter trend rally, then it's going to stop right now because that's where Stevie's green line is at. So you got Stevie's green line on a daily basis lining up with a break down level on the five hour time frame, which also tells us if price continues to move higher, that uh, we're probably going to make a run back towards the all time highs, if not beyond that. So that's what we have on the daily time frame. But I can make for those that are aggressive traders, then now would be the time or approximately now would be the time to begin that position to the short side. Am I recommending that? I'm not. I don't see the I don't see the short term time frame signals that are also supporting that. And if we look at the day, the weekly time frame out here, what's the weekly time frame going to tell us? Well, weekly time frame just simply says that it's just bullish. It's until price closes below Stevie's green line, which would be 86.42. What the NQ is saying on a weekly basis is I want to make a run to at least complete my one-to-one -one A to B equals CD pattern. And that would take us up to 90.45 and some change out there. So there's our NQ. We know we've got some resistance both between its horizontal trading ranges as well as Stevie's green line on the daily and its um, TD setup nine count breakdown level on the five hour time frame. But price is just up at resistance. So again, for those of you that want to take an aggressive stance, which I can definitely understand, I'm not going to do that, but I could be dead wrong here. Um, 
we could justify that now would be the time. I'd say continue to pay attention and watch the NQ out there. We could do the same thing for the ES Mini, but we won't. Let's go take a look at some other instruments that I think folks have some interest in. Let's take a look at uh, gold. If we take a look at gold, here we're taking a look at its uh, horizontal trading ranges, both its weekly and its monthly. We can see that uh, last night as uh, the equity, as the uh, gold futures contract opened up, price gapped up above 1561. 1561 was the weekly resistance level. And I don't know where price ends this week. 1601 is the next uh, monthly horizontal trading range. So you can see that's your resistance level, about 1601. Price closes under 1561. You're just back inside the range, which basically then communicates to us that right now gold would be trading between 1600 or close to that and 1462.70. That would be its monthly set of horizontal trading range boundary lines. Right now we got the Dow down three dollars and thirty-three cents. The S P up three dollars and thirteen cents. Be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow trading just slightly green. S&P's up three. NASDAQ 23. Russell 2,063 cents out there. Let's uh, So as we go to the uh, two-minute wrap up right here, um, 
Well, let's take a look at it. We didn't talk about natural gas. I think I mentioned it earlier. Natural gas is not a buy. Not a buy, not at least just yet. If we take a look at this, this is why we utilize some of these tools out here. Stevie's green line, red line, very important. We can see that what, what price did today was nothing more than a counter trend rally right up into resistance. Stevie's red line. Now, red line is uh, uh, when price is moving lower is uh, more bearish than the green line. The red line tells us the price oscillator. That's a difference between the 19 to 39 day exponential moving average of price, but it tells us the price oscillator is below zero. The expression is there's nothing more bearish than a failed uh, bullish pattern out here. Well, bullish from the standpoint price is unable to get above $2.16. That is Stevie's red line at the moment. That was a rejection. It says it wants lower price. Now, the good news might be that uh, we could see a low here in the next uh, couple of uh, days out here. Friday was uh, a wave count number six, letter F. Uh, don't worry, I'll, I'll eventually figure that out. Uh, could be a letter F out there. Uh, that was your 1 to 1 1.618A to B equals CD pattern. No bullish reversal candle. So maybe it's getting close, but right now it is no cigar. And so I would not suggest being long natural gas, at least in taking a look at the daily time frame chart for it. Um, silver, silver we mentioned is kind of flat out here. It's up uh, three pennies trading out at 18.19. It's trading just slightly above the top of its uh, of its uh, box out here, its daily profile. Uh, today's going to be bar seven of a TD, set up nine count. The last high that formed out here in silver took place uh, back on bar number eight of a TD set up nine count. That was back in August. So that says uh, tomorrow, if it's going to follow that pattern, could be a top for hi-ho silver. Folks, thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned. My favorite polar bear, David White. I believe he's back from a nice rested vacation. Tom O'Brien to take us on home. We'll see you tomorrow on Proofing Tuesday.